Chloe here with Cross Country Mortgage. Against all odds, CCM has just closed the Garcia's dream home in 21 days. I was able to speak with their top loan officer before they went into the locker room, and he said it was a matter of dedication. Ultimately, they leaned on their experience as a team. They've been here before. They've done all types of loans. Simply put, CCM loan officers know how to close as a team for your dream home. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Back to you in the studio. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS 3029, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing opportunity. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty? sizzling to perfection. It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now enjoy a large iced coffee for just two bucks and a breakfast sandwich to make a meal. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Hey everybody, it's Sam with Pro Wrestling Overtime, and you know how much I love Josh Barnett's blood sport. I absolutely cannot wait when one happens to get an announcement on the next one, and then follow it for, it's usually about two months, three months. And he slowly starts putting the card together with the help of Brett Lauderdale and some of the other promoters. And it is always a a good show. Uh, I'll be honest with you. At, well, I guess it was during the first couple matches, they were kind of talk fests because they started off in the beginning slow, especially during the Starboy Charlie versus Yoa uh, match. I was kind of shocked that Starboy Charlie, who's 18 years old, if you guys have never seen him, he super athletic, high flying. Um, chose to be in blood sport. I understand why people would ask him to be in blood sport, but wasn't sure why he agreed. There's no ropes, there's no ring posts. Um, not sure why a flyer would want to do something like that. Well, as Starboy Charlie and Yoa got involved, I then immediately understood. Um, He wanted to show his grappling technique, him being a technical wrestler, what he could do. And it became an on-the-mat wrestling-type match. Well, I had some people with me that were watching that. First time they've ever watched Bloodsport. And they almost immediately was like, is Bloodsport like Olympic wrestling or high school wrestling? And I was like, not usually. And they were like, good, because we hate this. And I was like, well, you're going to see a lot of grappling and stuff. And they were like, no, we don't want to see mounts on the bike. If they are grappling and and trying to do submission moves and countering it and different things like that, that's one thing. We're used to that in UFC. But... This trying to turn people over, and it almost looked like at one time um, Yoa almost went for a pin. And so it was like they were forgetting where they were. Starboy Charlie kind of acted like he was taking control of the match. I really thought that he might actually win. 
his very first blood sport contest. But I think everything got exciting as it ended because Starboy, like I said, was controlling it. He came up off the mat and Yoya got to his feet before him. And as Starboy Charlie moved in, Yoya caught him with a knee. Completely. And I do mean completely. Completely knocked him out. And you could see just an immediate change in the crowd that it was like, oh my gosh, this is exciting. So I don't know if there were a lot of new people there. I know new friends of mine were bored, were talking about turning it off, were even questioning, you know, why are you having us watch this? But as soon as, boom, he knocked him out, they ramped up. Zeta Zhang, yeah, that's with Z's, Zeta Zhang, she is a former WWE wrestler, involved in the Mae Young Classic and, and things, came out, and I remember her vaguely, maybe one time, I don't remember watching a lot of matches. And she got let go by WWE, I think, a couple years ago. And I don't remember seeing her since. So, really didn't know what we were getting. Didn't know how she would come out and be. Of course, then, we see KZT come out seen her several times as far as WrestleMania week at the clock does. Uh seen her on past blood sports. Um was expecting maybe her being a veteran to win. But Zeta Zhang I thought put on a heck of a match. Uh was really energetic her counter moves were very clean, very quick, and she ended up winning and very shocked that someone hasn't picked her up or been interested in her. Technically, I think she's pretty good. Now, needs Maybe a little work on the mic, but definitely wasn't bad. Uh, Royce Isaacs versus Clark Connor. Really was shocked with this one. Of course, been watching Clark Connor and Royce Isaacs on New Japan Strong. I don't like Clark Connor. I'm going to be doing some New Japan Strong updates here later in the week, and I just can't stand him. I don't like his attitude. I I feel like his style is kind of herky-jerky. He's not real smooth. It's almost like he's not real sure what he's doing when he's putting together combinations. Royce Isaacs, I really feel like is the better wrestler, the better competitor. However, Clark Connors got the win, and I guess it was just a little shocking. Um, Not that Clark Connors is not a good wrestler. It's just that did not expect to see him do that to be able to control or to be able to win, I guess. Now, Marina Schaefer versus Masha Slamovich um, was 
interesting. Hadn't seen uh, Schaefer in this style since WWE Raw Underground, which was what? It was sometime last year. Um, we got to see her, you know, fighting there. And, of course, that got the rumors stirred up of them pulling the four horsewomen of UFC together. They even mentioned it, I think, on the announcer calls about how Schaefer had become a part of that group with Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey. Masha, I have only seen two or three times. You can tell uh, she's a little inexperienced, but, like I said, real energetic also. And thought she was going to take control, that her unexpected moves by her were, I think, surprising somewhat to Schaefer. But Shaver's experience, her veteran instincts, her submission moves really got to Masha. And if Masha is going to continue in blood sport, she's really got to be working on her counters and still keeping that shocking nature, but just being smoother, transitioning, and, and working around it. Davy Richards versus Yuna Iyamura. Um, good match. I didn't think it was real exciting. I thought it was really a typical Davy Richards style match. Um, yes, uh, on Yuna's comeback, Davy didn't look real good. But throughout the match, he pretty much controlled it. Um, looked like he was actually the leader, if you want to say, of it. And um, really was impressed with him. Eric Hammer and Bad Dude Tito. Of course, seen Bad Dude Tito millions of times on Bloodsport. I don't really understand why he's called Bad Dude, because it seems like he loses every single time. He acted like this time when he lost it actually bothered him, but sometimes he acts like he could care less. Even as a collective during WrestleMania week, just didn't look like he was with it. Eric Hammer, I had not seen, um, although I'm going to be looking out for for his name, controlled the whole match, uh, really overpowered and overworked by Dude Tito, and look forward to Josh Barnett uh, moving him up the card. I'll tell you what I thought might steal the match of the night. And I guess when you look at it, because now I'm second-guessing myself, I mean, I guess when you look at it, it could have been uh, legitimately called that, but it, not for the reasons why I thought it could have been. J.R. Kratos versus Talvin, uh, or Calvin Tankman, heavyweight hustle. Uh, this was a gigantic battle. More ways than one. Um, I thought it was going to last longer and maybe be more even than what it was. Kratos came out, showed his experience, and took it to Tank. And I understand Tankman still really new, really inexperienced with the game of wrestling. But I just thought he would look better. 
I I gripe at him sometimes when watching MLW because it doesn't seem like he is getting better as fast as what I thought he would. I'm not sure he's hustling. Uh, especially when you compare him a year and a half ago, 18 months ago, to, say, Jordan Oliver. They're both, you know, basically in the same age bracket. 18 months ago, it looked like they were going to be headed down the same path. Well, let me tell you, Jordan Oliver has just impressed me to know in in the last 18 months. Whereas Tankman, yeah, he's athletic, he's learning, just looks like a real... Story. Chloe here with Cross Country Mortgage. Against all odds, CCM has just closed the Garcia's dream home in 21 days. I was able to speak with their top loan officer before they went into the locker room, and he said it was a matter of dedication. Ultimately, they leaned on their experience as a team. They've been here before. They've done all types of loans. Simply put, CCM loan officers know how to close as a team for your dream home. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Back to you in the studio. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS 3029, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing opportunity. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty? sizzling to perfection it's time to cheer for egg mcmuffin and fresh cracked eggs at mcdonald's it's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest to goodness morning meal breakfast it's on at mcdonald's now enjoy a large iced coffee for just two bucks and a breakfast sandwich to make a meal prices and participation may vary cannot be combined with any other offer a combo meal Flow pays and he's been in Bloodsport, I think, the last three times. So thought that he would be comfortable and be with it. But Kratos looked like a monster, basically, against him. And really took it to him. Punishing him. Um, so that's why I said, you know, you if you looked at it that way, how Kratos was so dominating I thought then it could be you know considered for match of the night but just was disappointed I was expecting more out of this match just because I thought it would be a little more even um, loving Kratos for the work he is doing in New Japan Strong in NWA and um, when he showed up in Ring of Honor, I am enjoying him immensely, especially in the last six months to a year. Kratos has just been everywhere and really shown his growth. Alex Coughlin and Filthy Tom Lawyer. What to say about this? As far as putting on a show, talking, backing it up, is there any small man better than Filthy Tom Lawler? Because I really don't think so. He uh, is just unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. I knew this was going to be a battle. We had seen them before. Uh, Coughlin had really gotten under Filthy Tom's skin. And Filthy Tom came out dressed exactly like Coughlin. Uh, black trunks. No blue jean shorts this time. Black trunks, the one black knee pad, same as Zach socks, same as Zach shoes, acting the same as Zach way, even had grown a mustache like Coughlin. So as soon as he's coming out, I am rolling. Because as they uh, look at each other, you could see. Coughlin kind of sizing him up like, dude, what are you doing? 
why are you dressed like this? And you get Filthy Tom with the cocky smirk swagger. And it did. It turned out to be unbelievable match. Back and forth. Coughlin got some nice blows in. Um, really countered some of Filthy Tom's uh, submission moves. But Filthy Tom got him in the end. And I literally thought he had broken Coughlin's leg or hurt his knee, like tore or something. Coughlin laid on the mat for quite a bit of time before he could kind of get up and maneuver with help. He was limping, wasn't putting a lot of weight on that area. Really should have checked in, sorry about that, and found out later, you know, what exactly was going on. No doubt went to the hospital to get checked out. He had had, I think, MCL and ACL injury in the past. So kind of a little bit of a scary moment. Um, the co-main event with Josh Barnett and Tiger Ruas um, was almost bored. I kind of hate to say that. I usually enjoy Josh Barnett's matches extremely well. Tiger Ruas can, you know, bring it. I don't know if it's more so because they were a little more evenly matched, especially with their backgrounds, or that Barnett really didn't push it until until towards the end. Maybe that was it. But it wasn't... I didn't feel like Josh Barnett was on fire like he usually is. And I think that's the Josh Barnett that I... Really enjoy watching. I thought Tiger Ruhoff was his typical self. As far as very even killed. Very um, standard. Very, um, can't think of the word. But he was just his even killed self. Doing what he typically does. Whereas I felt Josh Barnett went down. Almost to his level. Josh Barnett, of course, ended up winning. But was just really shocked that that match went as slow as it did. And I didn't get the feeling that it was methodical and calculated so much as... I just didn't feel like either one was really into it. The... Main event, last match, Minoru Suzuki versus Dirty Daddy, uh, Chris Dickinson. This match was everything it was billed to be. Totally get Dickinson um, almost being starstruck. This was his hero, well, not really his hero, but someone he enjoyed watching, 16, 17 years old, you know, that he grew up watching in Japanese wrestling when he was streaming it as a teenager. Suzuki, this American tour, I think, has been really... um, trying to think of the word. Steady... um, he has had moments where I think, oh, yeah, he's trying to really get into the pain. But at Bloodsport, I really almost felt like he was out of his element. 
I know the chops. He is known for being extremely stiff and them actually hurting, hurting. I don't know whether it's where he's older, not moving as fast, not. I don't think he has shown as much power. Dickinson always proving. How athletic he is for a big man. He really showed that he belonged in the ring with Suzuki. And I've said this before with him on New Japan Strong, with him on Ring of Honor, uh, being around Brody Lee, really learning kind of the ropes. Um, I love him in GCW. I love his enthusiasm, his character, how he interacts with the fans. Chris Dickinson, I would love to see in one of the bigger promotions. But I wonder, would some of his talent, his charisma, shine through? in the bigger promotions where the fans aren't as interactive, aren't as into it, and really want to know the wrestlers. I think that's what I like about grassroots wrestling. The fans get a chance to talk to these wrestlers. They get a chance to be around them, to touch them, to interact with them, and I feel like they make a greater connection. Whereas in the bigger shows, sometimes it's just a show. I enjoy that Impact Wrestling now getting crowds, and they're interacting way more, I think, than uh, what they have been for two or three years. And I think that's the new talent. Um, I'm enjoying watching the GCW product, which Bloodsport is under. They are truly building up a connection with their fans, but allowing the wrestlers to build that up. And you can see it continue when you watch uh, wrestlers like Trey Miguel, or you watch how people still follow Cali Ray and uh, MSK, the old rascals, and, and things like that. So I can't wait to watch this new group, if they choose and if they get selected, to move up. I, I, but I will enjoy them as long as they are in GCW. Thought this blood sport um on paper looked almost weak excited to see some brand new names getting involved but then didn't really live up to the billing i wasn't as excited when this blood sport was over I wasn't immediately, you know, asking or looking around to find out when Bloodsport 8 was happening. I just wasn't. And I think that has left me with a bad taste in my mouth. Not that it wasn't a good event. It was. But when you compare it to some of the other Bloodsports, it was not as exciting Um I don't think that it got the fans even as pumped up as past blood sports. So I think they set the bar high with some of the other ones, and this one just did not reach that level. Still very good, but not good enough, I think, for what blood sport stands for. So, I mean... Is it worth your time to go back and watch a replay or something? Yeah, maybe if you want to see some of the newer 
people, or like I said, if you want to see Kratos, Tankman, Coughlin, Lawler, and Suzuki Dickinson, I don't blame you. If you're just a casual, or, you know, you could give or take UFC, MMA, you could give or take Bloodsport, then this is probably a pass for you. But for the hardcore fans, of course they're going to watch it. But I don't know that it's going to excite them as much as previous blood sports have. I now, I guess it's four days later, still haven't looked to see when Bloodsport 8 is. I don't know. I don't know if he's announced it. I don't have a clue. But I just haven't been into it with WWE, SmackDown, New Japan Strong, and uh, GCW's other event, Bound for Glory, um, and then NWA by any means necessary this weekend. This doesn't rate as high as others. Oh, I forgot. Uh, AEW Dynamite. Unbelievable. So, um, guys, I will be talking to you guys soon about, I'm sure, another topic, another event. But this one, kind of a downer. But I will talk to you soon, and hopefully I will see you down the road.